Tim, that was awesome. Appreciate it. Uh, Chico, appreciate the opportunity to be here. And thanks to everybody for, for showing up and uh, coming out to listen to poetry. And, uh, I'm going to read real fast because I heard those guys warming up and I want to go play uh, really, really bad. So uh, we're going to go on the east end here. And uh, first one is uh, Those Days. The chemical orange river rouge sun was an overgrown uncle slipping me a sip of strolls and it took weeks to journey the stones throw home from school. Ripping fistfuls of flowers through chain link for my mother from anybody's garden. The east end alleys were jeweled highways lined with garbage can guards where I once untuned a baseball bat, a handgun, and a stack of hustlers. I sang songs in German and Japanese, Sukiyaki and the girl from Ipanema. Kicked jams with a devil in a blue dress, outdrew Boyd and Brown and gunned them down. Entertained Captain Bobolo and Tricky Dick, hat trick Gordy Howe, KO'd Cassius Clay and Blue Lewis, was crowned King of Dearborn by Orville Hubbard himself. When rain machine gunned our aluminum awning and left me pen on the porch, I took being wet, nameless, and small because the factory haze sun always returned with no hard feelings, lighting me to the treasures of my world. This is called My Language. It was written upon the occasion of being told that I make no sense. So hire a translator, I say, always with my answers. But don't look at me, because not even I speak my own language, English or Polish or Swedish or Frenchish or any other ish. Ah, maybe gibberish, but so few of us speak it with such eloquence anymore. Start with my deceased grandfather, who once tried to feel up my brother's fiance in the darkened hallway of our apartment, and when confronted, defiantly declared, I wouldn't spend a dime on that hussy. Or maybe the slosh Slavic blonde at the polka fest who was well into her boombas, but not so much to inform me upon my proposal to dance. Little man, I'm not that drunk. Or perhaps Diamond John, the shift foreman at the butcher shop who cleavered and inflated our souls on a daily basis and fired me for incompetence that not even I could deny with the words, hate to skin you, buddy, but I need your hide. Take their tongues and wring them dry, soaked vinegar rags twisted into cyclones of non sequitur, dripping the perfect sense of crash syntax, godly nectar of nonsense, my piss poor gift to raise eyebrows like a tuxedoed magician floating a hokey maiden. And there, there, right there is my language. And since we're going for the East End, we'll, we'll read this, uh, it's called The East Enders. We were dumb about our stupidity, broadcasting it, lime suspenders, jacking up plaid, polyester, calling card, hucklebuck, huckster, dumbness. We passed off flatulence for wit, bazooka joe for wisdom, mastercard and visa for security, lawn gnome for art, peroxide and mascara for beauty, crosswords for intellect, collection baskets for religion, light beer for discipline, mag wheels for status, stitches for respect, perfume for love, t-bones for the good life. We work diligently at nothing anyone would remember or pay a decent wage for, proudly produce perishable goods, eagerly consume generic or what could only be bought in bulk, and openly mock those fat-ass bigwigs who docked our pay and planned our daily obsolescence. We wondered in earnest what dogs would say if they could talk, where donut holes went, who made God in the first catcher's glove, if the Incredible Hulk could whip Godzilla, when exactly leisure shoots went out of style, whether tomatoes were fruit or vegetable, and, there was no, and why there was no number 1111. Reflection for us was a split-second revelation next to a nightclub urinal. If we harmed anyone, it was ourselves, and we never felt a goddamn thing. Thank you.